Thanks for joining us on Tandem Radio for a very special segment by design, focused on helping you understand how God designed you so that you may be healthy and productive in fulfilling God's purposes in your life for many years to come. Now let's join our host, health expert and public speaker, Dr. James Prudian. Welcome to the By Design radio program. My name is Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare and PrudianHealthcare.com, where health literacy is the key to longevity. And as long as God has us on this side of eternity, my show is designed to educate you and your families to feel better, function better, and live as many quality disease-free years as possible. And this week, we're going to continue our conversation in clinical nutrition. We're doing topical and foundational uh, shows. Uh, last week, we came out of talking about, i give you an example of how how um, the milk uh, organizations have petitioned the FDA to start adding food uh, sweeteners like aspartame into our milk and not even putting it on the label. We've been focused on how to take better care of ourselves by our call to action, God's call to action, for with God nothing is impossible, Luke 137. And it's our responsibility to look at our families and ourselves, not with man's plan, but with God's plan. And overcoming nutritional stress begins with understanding first the subject matter of what is good clinical nutrition. And if you want to go back in the archive shows, please go to tandemradio.com, go to the By Design tab, and you can go to all my archive shows, um, and you could read or get caught up if you've missed some of them. We've been discussing the impact of soda, the impact of sugar. We've gone through God's plan of protein, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, and water of the essential nutritional ingredients. And we've been going back and forth with some statistics as well. And I've been using the pyramid of health as a a model. That's a model that I have in my office for my patients. And I use it at my wellness at work seminars. And one of the um, topics in the pyramid of health is healthcare versus sick care. For many years, I have described to my audiences and explained that we don't have a healthcare system in America. We have a sick care system in America. And our sick care system is designed for um, tech, great technology, great um, you know uh, ability uh, to, for emergency situations. Uh, somebody has a heart attack, breaks their arm, falls off a roof, e- um, uh, 911 and our emergency rooms, we are equipped. Our medical teams are equipped, schooled uh, to be the best in the world in emergency and traumatic care. But healthcare is something different. Healthcare is a complete state of physical, nutritional, psychological, emotional, and spiritual well being, and not merely the absence of disease as defined by the World Health Organization. So if we look at that definition of what health is, and we realize that the sick care system may not be at the end of the day the one that's good for us because it's costing us so much money and so many Americans are so chronically ill, we have to start connecting the dots between the sick care system that we have and the current nutritional platform that we have along with the breakdown of the American family. So I, uh, someone in one of the uh, audience uh, had sent me an email and I thank you for it. Um, A link to something called U.S. Manages Disease Not Health. Well, that kind of caught my eye because that's part of my pyramid of health. It says it right there in the title, U.S. Manages Disease Not Health. It's by Andrew Weil, W-E-I-L. Um, you probably, maybe if you've heard of him, and Dr. Wheel has been around for a long time and has done some really cool work in the field of preventative, um, preventative um, health care. Um, he wrote a book, the author, you, uh, Andrew Wheel, You Can't Afford to Get Sick, Your Guide to Optimal Health and Health Care. And CNN did this thing, the most, the most insistent political question over the past four years is, how can more Americans get access to medical care? The federal response uh, was the um, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, other than, otherwise known as Obamacare. It's a complex mix of insurance changes and tax credits, and it takes place January 1st, 2014. So in about um, nine months or so, this is going to be law. It will provide access to insurance to about 30 million people who currently don't have it. Unfortunately, that was the wrong question. So the question was, how can... Americans get access to medical care. And Dr. Will saying it's the wrong question. The question is, you know, the, the, the looming answer is, is wrong as well. The right question is, how can we improve medical care 
that it's worth extending to more people. In other words, how can we create a healthcare system that helps people stay healthy to avoid disease that costs so much money to manage? The cost of healthcare is at 16% of the GDP, it's going up to 20% of the GDP, and the majority of it is the management of disease when people already have the disease. So Dr. Willis said here, as he argued for years, that we don't have a healthcare system in America. We have a disease management system, one that depends on expensive drugs and surgeries that treat health conditions after they manifest, manifest rather than giving our citizens simple diet, lifestyle, and therapeutic tools to keep them healthy. Ah, euphoric when I read this. My ears started to, to ring. So many of us, this is what by design is all about. It's about bringing attention to the fact that we need to start talking about our call to action, which is to educate ourselves and our families about this word healthcare. It's not just a right to have health care. It's a right to take better care of yourself through proper education and proper decision making, proper discernment, and following God's plan. The U.S. currently ranks lowest on a variety of health uh, measures. The new uh, study from the NIH uh, concluded. Specifically, Americans have more obesity, more sexually transmitted diseases, shorter life expectancies, and higher infant mortality than inhabitants of nearly all of the 16 developed peer countries that were studied. So that's more obesity, sexual transmitted diseases, shorter life expectancy, higher infant mortality rate. What's the culprit? It's the medical system based on maximizing profits rather than fostering good health. Our good health comes from us and our decision making. And it also comes from our government and food companies treating us and providing us foods that aren't packaged in pretty boxes and cans, but are deadly and toxic. I've always said, you know, most, most breakfast cereal, there's more nutritional value in the box uh, than what's inside of the box. It, you have more, you, it's better off to eat the box than what's inside of it, because what's inside of it is toxic and deadly. Eat the cardboard, you probably get more nutritional value out of that. And, and the same, when you look at the way we're being treated, um, high, High forms of medicine, uh, t high tech medicine, drugs and surgery absolutely have their place in our system, absolutely. But the modern medical system uh, treats almost every health condition as if it was an emergency. And we could be doing so much more by understanding functional medicine, and not just functional medicine, but even if you look at the, natural, uh, the National Center of Complementary and Alternative Medicine at NIH, this is a group that's combining mainstream medical therapies and complementary and alternative therapies for where in some, t some cases you need the, 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 uh, the medication and the surgeries to treat that patient. But most of the time we're gonna take the low cost interventions to foster long-term health and resilience. Better immune function, better digestion, better structure, less stress, more energy, less inflammation, and less toxification. If as a nation, as a culture, we started to look every day in our medicine chest and in our cupboards at what we're consuming and passively consuming and we need to stop outsourcing our meals. We need to start getting back to cooking and preparing our own foods, which means we have to shop or hunt for that food, bring it home and cook it and eat it. And remember, if it's not in the house, you're not gonna eat it. So there should be very limited amount of toxic man-made food in our homes. So overcoming nutritional stress, which is this, I think I'm on week 13 or so of nutrition, the whole process has been identifying, just identifying the things so that we can make better decisions. Our call to action is to make better decisions to take back our health. We want to reduce and eliminate unhealthy fats, reduce or eliminate refined processed starches and sugars. We want to optimize our fat intake by eating high quality fat, olive oil, flaxseed oil, things that are organic and naturally made. We want to consistently eat an abundance 
of fresh fruits and vegetables. If we're gonna supplement, we wanna take a high quality supplement, not the garbage that I see out there in these big box chains. That's not of an FDA regulated. You don't know what's in the bottle. And we wanna improve our water intake. Don't shop that interior of that grocery store. That's we want to avoid packaged and canned foods. We want to avoid white foods, white flour, white sugar, white salt, white bread. All of that has been made by a guy in a laboratory. We want to eat foods that rot or spoil, just eat them before they do with a lot of color. We want foods with color. And so if you look at, going back to the soda conversation, one 20 ounce soda has 17 teaspoons of sugar for 250 calories. A kid who drinks a soda a day for a week would need to bicycle four hours and 20 minutes just to burn off the calories from the darn soda. Think about that, guys. That is a toxic, processed substance. It's not just about calories. It's about what that soda is doing to the liver and our insulin levels through our pancreas, and we really, really want to avoid this. Put that in the category of a treat uh, to be used at celebrations only. So our goal is to look at ourselves from a physical, nutritional, and psychological perspective, understanding that there is health care and there is sick care. Let's be more aware of our surroundings when we're shopping, when we're going to parties, when we're out with our loved ones, when we're out for dinner. We want to make better decisions about God's design and God's plan for us. 75% of health care expenditures are related to chronic illness. That means three, uh, 75 cents out of every dollar is spent on an American who has a chronic illness they're trying to manage. Once again, let's go back to Dr. Wheel's title here that CNN put out. U.S. manages disease, not health. And I could prove it with statistics that will bore you. <laughs> all right. So the statistics are all in. Man has interjected an inflammatory processed food supply. 90% of all of our food is processed and causes this host of illness and now 75 cents out of every dollar is spent on managing it. I hate admiring problems. I like to take a problem, put it on the desk, and I like to sit with a group of people and start solving it. And by the grace of God and through his word, the answers are all right there. We need to get back to his plan of being with our family and our friends and avoiding TV and avoiding being sold things. We need to get out of the cereal boxes and we need to stop going and looking at man man's problems. Let's get back into what it's all about, which is stop admiring the problem. Let's be more literate. Let's be a very proactive member of our lifestyle for our sake of our children. Because Einstein said doing insanity is doing the same thing over and over and again and expecting different results. And since what kills most Americans today is chronic illness, health literacy is the key to longevity. We need to more, be more literate in this subject matter to make better decisions. Well, I think that's enough for today. Uh, you've been listening to the By Design radio program. My name is Dr. James Prudian. Please go to prudianhealthcare.com to find out more information about me or if you'd like me to speak at your company. Uh, also go to drprudian.com, which is my blog site, and please subscribe and be a member. God bless you and have a great week. You've been listening to By Design with Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare. To learn more, visit us at tandemradio.com. That's tandemradio.com or on Facebook. And don't forget to email us with your questions. We'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, hope you have a healthy week, and we look forward to you joining us next time for more fantastic insights from Dr. James Prudian on By Design, a special production of Tandem Radio.